The best way I can describe this very moment within the Zelda community is the calm before the storm. This is especially the case with content creators, because once November 20th hits, we'll all be clinging to that Age of Calamity lore, and the next couple of months will consist of countless theories and or other topics regarding the game. I've done my share of trailer analyses and even some theories. In fact, a bunch of you wanted me to go over other topics, such as whether this will be a time loop or not, but to be honest, we're so close to the game releasing that I think it's best to hold off on any theories until I get my hands on the game. With that said, you all are clearly interested in Age of Calamity content, so this video won't be a theory or gameplay analysis. Instead, I wish to go over why I believe this game might split the Zelda fanbase. This all comes from my own personal experience from the demo, and since I probably won't do an official review, now's the best time to voice my opinion on the matter. I can only base this off the trailers and demo, so of course my thoughts are subject to change once the full game releases. Also, I won't be talking about any leaks or data mines for obvious reasons. After playing the demo, I can safely say that my overall hype for this game has gone from an 11 to 8-ish. It has nothing to do with the gameplay itself. As a matter of fact, I'm impressed with how much detail was put into it to make it feel like a Breath of the Wild game. Not only character moves, but also the menu screens and map. Hack and slash video games aren't my favorite type of gameplay, but if it's for something like Zelda, I'll still play it and most likely enjoy it. I will say this though, on my end, the frame rate was really bad at times. The moment I was put into Hyrule Field, it was obvious that the game was struggling. I know that others claim they didn't have a problem with it, but from my experience, it was not good. There's nothing wrong with a game being 30 frames per second, as long as it's a stable 30 frames per second. As a matter of fact, Wind Waker has the same frame rate, but runs very smoothly with a few minor hiccups along the way. I do hope that by the time Age of Calamity releases, they'll improve it. But that's not the main reason my excitement for the game has gone down. That comes from something else. The story, at least from what we currently know. You get only as far as the introduction once you realize that Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity will be dealing with time travel. Chances are you've watched a movie or played a game where time travel is the whole premise. Either the protagonist must correct some mistake they made when traveling back through time, or the whole goal is to prevent something from happening. Of course, since no one has been able to actually do it, well, aside from that time traveler who predicted Breath of the Wild's trilogy, how it would affect reality itself is up to interpretation. When it was first introduced into films, such as Back to the Future, the idea was if you prevented your birth in the past, the future you would cease to exist. These days, it's a lot more complicated with alternate timelines and the grandfather paradox. As someone who frequently watches anime, some good examples of stories with different forms of time travel are Erased and Steins Gate. The former is about a young man with an ability which sends him back in time mere moments before a life-threatening incident, giving him the chance to prevent it from happening. And Steins Gate takes a dive into the whole changing the future through the past concept and does a darn good job at explaining why it isn't so simple, with multiple world lines and a whole lot of pain. Also. Watch Steins Gate. It's incredible. Unfortunately, given how popular this plot device is, it's hard to come across a story that implements it without seeming monotonous. That, or the narrative is full of plot holes, all thanks to time-hopping shenanigans. In The Legend of Zelda's case, we've already seen time travel multiple times, and most people don't like how Age of Calamity is going down this route simply because they're sick of it. One of the reasons the Zelda timeline exists is because of time travel. And spoilers, not everyone likes the timeline and it splits. At the moment, the two biggest theories on Age of Calamity's time travel are 1. It will create a new timeline split, and 2. It's a time loop. And no matter how you look at it, either one would make things kind of messy. If Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity takes place in an alternate timeline, it could explain how things are different without contradicting Breath of the Wild's lore assuming that that game takes place in the original timeline, the one that the Guardian robot left. It's because of his appearance in the past that both the runes and Sheikah Towers are discovered early, but if this takes place in a new timeline separate from Breath of the Wilds, it could work. But that means accepting the fact that we have yet another split in the Zelda timeline. 
Personally, I'd much prefer the idea of a time loop since it would fit well into Breath of the Wild's narrative. Having an already tragic story include a subplot with a robot traveling back through time in an attempt to fix things, going through the same loop again and again, unable to fulfill Zelda's wish of protecting everyone, would be a nice addition to the overall plot. This also means that Age of Calamity would remain in a linear timeline, leading up to Breath of the Wild. The problem with this route is, now, everything within Age of Calamity are the events leading up to Breath of the Wild. Everything we know about the story could be changed. It's not as big of a deal for information from Masterworks, since it's just a book, though there's risk of it happening to Breath of the Wild itself. The discovery of runes is the most frequently brought up example, and I was okay with this, but that was before the whole time travel part of it was revealed. Before the demo, none of us even considered time travel to be an option, and that's why theorists are going kind of crazy right now. The way it was presented implied that we'd be shown the events leading up to Breath of the Wild. This game takes place 100 years before the events of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. In that game, the great calamity that occurred 100 years prior was mentioned, but the actual event itself wasn't shown in full. In this game, you'll be able to experience the events of the great calamity. I could see this mechanic being a part of something like Breath of the Wild too. In fact, we discussed that possibility long ago. But from the get-go, we knew that Age of Calamity was already intended to be a prequel, so adding time travel on top of that is kind of bizarre. It feels like we have two different games combined. Again, this is all based on the assumption that going back in time will result in a new split or time loop. In reality, we won't know what will happen until the game releases. The whole premise of Age of Calamity, combined with what was said in the initial reveal, gives off the impression that this game is without a doubt canon. And in reality, even with all the possible contradictions to Breath of the Wild, what Nintendo says kind of goes. They do own the series, after all. If they want to include time travel in a game, that's their decision to make. But I will say that I am starting to worry about the canonicity of this game. It's something I'll just have to see for myself once I get my hands on it. Again, the smaller details aren't really a big deal. Breath of the Wild implies that the Great Calamity happened quickly, with the immediate takeover of both Guardians and Divine Beasts. But since this is a game focusing on big battles, obviously the order of events are going to be spaced out. And the early corruption of Guardians could be explained with the Strands of Malice which followed the robot into the portal. I do still believe that the story of this game has potential. In reality, it all comes down to one simple question. Is time travel necessary? We'll all find out on November 20th. I personally hope, at the very least, it ends in inevitable failure. Having an alternate reality where the threat of Calamity Ganon is averted sort of takes away from the whole impact this moment had in Breath of the Wild. Just by knowing there was a way to prevent this kind of takes that shock value away. The whole reason Hyrule fell was because they were caught off guard by Ganon's plan to corrupt the very tech which would have been used against him. But there are shots which imply that Hyrule will still fall, such as Zelda on the ground crying and Akala Citadel burning. It's possible that, while parts of the game may differ, the key events will for the most part remain the same. And honestly, I'd be fine with that since we'd get a look at huge moments only briefly mentioned in Breath of the Wild. There's been talk of the champion clones on the tapestry representing the future quote-unquote champions. And if the robot finds a way to bring them back to the past to participate in the Great Calamity battle, I'm done. Even if they were brought from a future different from Breath of the Wilds, it would feel like Nintendo's just finding excuses to add them to the story. With that said, I do fully expect them to appear as DLC characters, along with other people who are relevant to Breath of the Wild. And I'd be completely fine with that, as long as Nintendo makes it clear that these DLC characters have no involvement in the story itself. With time travel being a huge part of this game, the possibility of even more timeline splits, and question of canonicity compared to Breath of the Wild, I am certain that the thoughts and opinions of this game will be both diverse and somewhat controversial. Could Age of Calamity be a great story with time travel? Of course. Nintendo is known for making curveballs, so I wouldn't be surprised if my opinion changed when it releases. One positive way to look at this, though, is how there was no obligation to make this game, yet it still exists. Despite what happens, I'm sure that I'll still enjoy it. 
Only time will tell. No, but seriously, why do the tips refer to this as the Hateno Tech Lab? Excuse me, but I believe we got ourselves a translation error. Let me explain. When we see the group make their way to the Breach of Demise, the direction they're headed to leads straight to the Royal Ancient Tech Lab. And we all know that the Hateno Tech Lab is in Hateno Village, which is on the other side of the map. Even then, the Hateno Tech Lab didn't exist until after the Great Calamity. We learned as much from Pura and Robbie's research notes. See? It was made after Link was put into the Shrine of Resurrection, so there's no possible way that this tech lab exists in the current day. I mean, sure, we do see the giant telescope and ancient lamps, but all that means is that they were later moved to Hateno Village.